Hello and welcome back to Storytime with Collie. This evening's story is another Little People Big Dreams edition of Rosa Parks. I hope you're ready. Here we go. <clears throat> Rosa grew up near Montgomery, Alabama with her mother, brother and grandparents. She was very little and very brave and she always tried to do what was right. When she was young, Rosa's grandparents told her stories about slavery, when black people weren't free to live like other people. Slavery was over, but times were still hard for Rosa and her family. Black people were treated very badly and were told not they were not equal to white people. Every day, Rosa watched the school bus go by taking white children to their big school. It didn't stop for her. She had to walk a long way to the one room school that was just for black children. Rosa knew this wasn't right. She knew she was a regular person, just as good as anyone else. Lots of times she had to make sure other people knew it too. When Rosa grew up and got a job in the city, she couldn't use the same doors, lifts, bathrooms or water fountain as white people. She could ride the bus but she had to sit at the back. Her life was full of rules that she knew weren't right. Rosa fell in love with a man named Raymond who was trying to change the rules to be more fair and equal. Soon Rosa started working too, trying to get more rights for black people and help for those who were treated badly. She worked day after day even when it seemed like nothing would ever change. On her way home from the city one day, a bus driver told Rosa to stand up so a white person could sit, take her seat. She was sick of rules that she knew were wrong. She thought, enough is enough. She said, no. Rosa was taken to jail. She wasn't scared because she knew that what she was fighting for was right. When Rosa came home that night, she talked to her friends and family about what to do. She decided to keep fighting no matter how hard it would be. Black people all over the city heard what happened to Rosa. They thought enough. Rosa inspired them to stop riding the buses until the rules changed. So they walked to school and to work and to the shops in all kinds of weather. Rosa traveled the country from New York to San Francisco to convince other people to join the fight. Finally, after one year, the Supreme Court decided that treating black people differently from white people on buses was wrong. The rules were going to change. It was no longer safe for Rosa to live in Alabama. She moved to Detroit and fought for fair schools, jobs and houses for black people. She fought for voting rights, women's rights and the rights of people in prison. When Rosa was an older woman, she was given awards and told she was a hero. But she knew who she was. A regular person just as good as anyone else and she had work to do. Rosa Park.